Boy, I wish we were watching something better. I wish I'd thought of that joke. <laughs> I wish I wish this movie deserved more effort than that, honestly. Yeah. I, I kind of get this. movie was ordered on Wish. <laughs> exactly. I I genuinely can understand the jokes about the AI stuff, though, from what little I know of this movie. I oh, know man. almost nothing. Oh, man. But from what little I know, I see why people accused it, because holy haberdashery. Right. This movie is like... Like, I don't want to say this movie was written with AI or anything, because there's no there's no solid proof of that or anything, but it's 100% a valid concern, especially nowadays, because you see AI everywhere nowadays and such. Yeah, yeah I mean, I can just as easily like believe it. that it's just lazily written, though, so... Oh, right, yeah, for sure. <laughs> True. Uh, uh, I, I think it's just popular to blame anything lazy on uh, AI now. That's definitely but... a very... It's definitely become a very lazy criticism. You can just say this was written by AI. There was a video on... There was a review of this movie that said it was written by, with AI. And I'm like, I don't know. That's kind of harsh. You know, without any that. actual evidence. You know, to say that... Just say it like that. It's like, okay. You could talk about it. It's a legit concern. But without any actual proof, you shouldn't just go around saying, oh, it was definitely written with AI. 100%. Yeah, but you know what? Your mom was written with AI. Boom. Hey, you were you were written with AI. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, we're here to watch Wish. I um, it is one of the most. Uh, I don't want to say it's one of the worst movies Disney's ever made. There there are worse movies Disney's made in the past. Like I would say this movie's still worse than I would say. Wish is still better than stuff like, like A Strange World or Ralph Breaks the Internet and such. Like those movies just have no soul or anything to them. This movie is this movie is a unique failure. I will say that much. It is a very unique failure in that it is the blueprint of a good movie and then it's just ruined by all the corporate stuff. Like, it's it's kind of a lot like Emperor's New Groove, only the Emperor's New Groove turned out to be a great movie in its own right. But if you're, if you're aware of that film's production history, you know, I think Wish went through a very similar fate that Emperor's New Groove did, where... Like, it was supposed to be one thing, but then executive meddling turned it into something else that it wasn't supposed to be. And now here we are. I would be so fascinated to see a documentary about the making of Wish, like The Sweatbox. Yeah, Box. yeah exactly. We need a documentary like The Sweatbox. <laughs> have you ever watched The Sweatbox, I... either of you? No. I have, yeah. The Sweatbox well, sweat is a documentary about the production of Emperor's New Groove. It was originally going to be a movie called Journey to the Sun. And it was going to be in the same vein as like Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, where it was going to be like a big name musical and stuff like that. And it had a completely different story, a completely different art style. Uh, Kronk wasn't songs a character. Yeah, it had songs in it. Yzma had a villain song called Snuff Out the Light. And that song is yeah, so snuff- good. I was going to say that's the only thing I do know was that I thought that was just cut from like way later. I didn't realize that was so early on. Oh, well, yeah, in a way like that, yeah. But, like, the, that song is fantastic. Like, they should have kept that at least. But, yeah, and, like, again, with all the corporate meddling and stuff like that, like, they changed it up. Like, there was a point where Owen Wilson was in the film. He was going to be... What? Yeah, Owen Wilson wow. was a character. It's funny. Um, well, it there was, was supposed to be sort of a Prince and the Pauper retelling. Yeah, only in Aztec. Huh. Only in Aztec uh, culture. It's not, not a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, Ink, Incan. Yeah, Incan, yeah, and Inca, Incan territory, stuff like that. Um, but then, like, because be- because movies like Hunchback and stuff were failing financially, well, I say failing, but they weren't making as much money as before, they got scared and thought, okay, nobody wants to see big-name musicals anymore, just make it a comedy, make it quick and zany and stuff, which, like, still a good movie at the end of the day, but that wasn't really the problem. The problem was that people were losing interest in 2D animation. Well, yeah. It's actually, you know, actually the saddest thing about this movie, I, I just want to throw out there, I know, again, I know nothing about it, and this is my first time watching it, but the saddest thing is, for over half of that 100 years, it was strictly 2D animation, and then how did they celebrate their 100 years with a 3D animated movie with no soul? Yeah, it, like, it, the 3D animation isn't even that good. Like, this is not a good-looking movie, I'm afraid. Oh, really? No, like, you see... Fuck, you I was watch- at least looking forward to eye candy. <laughs> just you wait there is there is none uh yeah like there's a i'm, I'm an I'm eye butcher shop yeah i mean the backgrounds are all right backgrounds are yeah. oh man like i i said that in my initial review but on rewatch it's like 
they're actually not that good. They're kind of empty and void. Like, there's a lot of empty space. Well, I'll, I'll show you later as we get into the movie. We are wasting time. Yeah. All right, so right, right. Yeah. let's go ahead and get into the movie, guys. All right, uh, Let share. the healing begin. Let the healing, more like the pain, more like the torture begin. I'm ready, I'm ready. No, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Disney, 100 years, everybody. 100 years. That guy's in the public domain now. Oh, that's right. We, that's mine now. We can use that now. <laughs> oh, look, the storybook opening like the original movies. Ben Shrek got his wipe his ass it. with it. Once upon a time, there was a... So speaking of the backgrounds, they said that they were inspired hey. loosely by Sleeping so... Beauty, and I'm like, Ivan Earl is rolling in his grave. I can... He said yeah, that. I see where they mean by that, but... You gotta understand, like, the those old paintings were so three-dimensional, so complex, you know? This just looks so flat so, and uninteresting. Also, I'm gonna just stop you at the word inspired. <laughs> Ripped off. Can you guys hear the movie okay, by the way? Is it too quiet for you guys, or...? I mean, you can make it quieter. I, I, don't, I don't want to hear it at all. <laughs> if only we could understand you. He's just saying the N-word over and over again. <laughs> Again, all wishes shouldn't be granted. <laughs> Asha, let's bake a cake. Oh. Uh, no. But I love cake. I mean, I I can't. Okay, she's the villain. You wi I wish. You'll, you'll forget she even exists in like five minutes, I promise. I actually did forget that she has a grandfather and a mom. Even though the grandfather's the catalyst for her. <laughs> so he's the best character so far. He likes cake. <laughs> This has the lighting of like the 2000s Barbie movies. <laughs> I was thinking I more like Sun from Barbie's World. I was thinking more like Sophia the First or something. I didn't pay for you to sing. I told you, tell me about the fucking city. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Look, what I'm saying about the backgrounds. They just feel so lifeless. The city feels kind of empty. There's people in the background, but like, there's just yeah, there's... there's a lot of empty space, you know. Like that's not, that was yeah, like no, a I see what you mean. that was a critical rule I learned in art school and like in well art school art class when I was like in fifth grade is that empty space like that is always a bad thing, you know. And like when you look back on all the old uh, Disney movies, you you saw that in the backgrounds they did everything they could to give as much life and vibrancy into the backgrounds as they possibly could. They didn't want to leave room for any form of like empty space where there was just nothing of of cruciality or anything. I don't know what the word is. I don't know exactly what was a word itself. Oh, I was just going to say, it takes away from the idea that this is this bustling metropolis because I don't see, I see like three people. So <laughs> You see like six or seven people. Yeah, despite the fact that this is a 3D animated film. They kind of yeah. blend in with the shit they're selling. Well, now this, these shots look fine. There's now more life in the background now than there was before. This looks better. I have a feeling it's going to be like one one minute you're going to be like, oh, it's actually doing okay. And then the next minute it's going to be like, eh, we're back to bland. Yeah. I do love how her tour is just, we have a king and he grants wishes. And she doesn't tell them shit about the city other than that. <laughs> I want my money back. Like, what? where exactly are we based in the real world exactly, you know? I remember that an animator on Twitter, like, they said that they animated this shot. They were the same person who animated the... Uh, the dancing scene from Tangled, you know, where Rapunzel draws the chalk on the ground. Apparently, this was the same person. Which oh. I, I kind of like that. I thought that was kind of okay. cool. I thought that was kind of cool. Exclusively animate scenes with yeah, chalk drawing stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just going to take a guess. And is his method of doing this, like, pretty bad? I mean, that would have been cool, but no. It just seems dumb to give him your wish. It's like, why don't, like, couldn't he just like randomly get it from like, a lottery and then you hold on to your wish? Yeah, but he's evil, Shade. You forget without regret. I want to meet the king. You for you hear that line? She you forget without regret. Like when you give up your wish, you forget that you did it. Uh, so what's the point? If he if if he grants it, you're like, grant what? Your wish? What wish? Get with me, you idiot. I don't know what you're talking about. That becomes, yeah, that becomes a major big hole in this story later. You'll see what I mean. So I didn't understand. Is this in the castle? How'd she get in there? Oh, she just walked in. Don't think too hard about it. Windows She's unlocked. allowed to just run into the castle like that. My best friend. I guess so. <laughs> oh my god, I know the guy's a snack, but come on. <laughs> Take mine. 
Why do any of these characters exist? Because we got a reference to the seven dwarves. Is this gonna actually have lots of references that'll be cute? No. Maybe like, okay, maybe like one or two are cute, but it just gets, it gets really nauseating fast. I actually kind of hate that I like the idea of referencing three characters that are like, you know, the old ones. Yeah, but they, uh, they don't matter. It's done well. Yeah, but they don't matter. They don't matter at all. I don't know. You're kind of boring now. No offense. Have I become boring? He's the only one who acts this way. Right? No, not boring. Just calm. This guy has like all the worst qualities of CinemaSins rolled into a character. I'm rooting for you, Asha. You're welcome for giving you the key to this fucking interview, bitch. Can I get a thank you? Oh, there you go. Why? Well, I see the way Did they establish that they know each other? Like, why is she rooting for her? Well, she's the tour guy. She's the fucking tour guy. That's all she does for the city. <laughs> You will, you will make a great account and here's money to go. Well, why? Because you're an awesome cashier. That, okay. Clearly, that's my passion. History of spells. Is it really that easy to it's learn magic good. in this universe? Like, you just find magic books anywhere and stuff and you can just become a sorcerer like that? Yeah, they said I he'd like guess. basically. He, they, they, they're almost implying like this motherfucker is like the first, at least in their area, to know magic. Like, how did he learn it? All these books exist. Did he write them? No, he just found them somehow. Like, again, the backstory is so vague. It just leaves so many important things out. This, this is what I, I hate about... I think it's the wizard. Like, that's the thing about fairy tales. It's like, fa fairy, uh, fairy tales are so much easier to get behind when they're simple. But when you have so many, like, little holes like that, it's like, oh, he studied magic and became a sorcerer. I'm like, okay, well, how did that work? Just have him be a wizard already. Just be like, oh, he was born with it. Like, when Elsa was born with powers, it's like, okay, it's magic. You just don't question it. But then Frozen 2 had to be like, well, the magic came from somewhere. And it's like, why? Why would you ruin it by just having to explain where the magic comes from? Just like, no, she just has powers. Whatever. It's a magical world. We're talking snowmen. Don't worry about it. You know? It's like the more simple a fairy tale with magic and stuff is, the easier it is to get behind the story. But when you start adding all these intricate details and like try to explain that magic has like an origin somewhere, it just it gets more complicated and messy. And unless you can actually explain where the magic comes from in a unique way, you're just making the story more compl uh, complicated and confusing. Yeah, that's why a yeah, series works better for stuff like that. As we find out, it's ultimately not relevant at all in this film, like where the magic came from or yeah. whether he was born with it. Yeah, trust just me. said he was born with it and it didn't change anything. <laughs> yeah, by the second half of the movie, they just completely forget everything about his backstory entirely. Do you think he's going to fire her right away just because she asks too many questions that he can't answer? You you actually just predicted it, kind of Shade. <laughs> That's kind of what happens, actually. Okay, I already hate how nice he is because if they change this later, it's not going to make sense. Oh, boy. It's funny how you're predicting everything this movie has to offer, Shade. <laughs> You haven't seen just, it yet, and you're just like, I genuinely I, haven't. I just, you're here. It's so predictable. So go get, out, get out the scorecard. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna be on a roll with this one. I care too much. Okay, that's interesting. It's my weakness. It's them pitching the movie to Disney. Regardless of the whole wish thing, she shouldn't have gotten the job anyways, because this is a horrible interview. It's a goat. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on. Is she, is, is she gonna get like rejected? She, uh, yeah, you, you have to wait and see. It happens in a few minutes. We'll let it play. I remember I wanted to play, I wanted to shit on this scene because this scene, this scene kind of pisses me off. Look, it's 2D animation in a Disney movie. I, I know they probably didn't recognize they were doing this, but that's just insulting. I know, like this movie yeah. was supposed this movie was supposed to be 2D animated. They were gonna make it 2D, but then the executives were like, "Oh, 2D animation is too complicated. There are things in 3D we you can do that you can't do in 2D." When James Baxter is literally sitting there just face palming, he's he's like at a meeting somewhere. It's like, "What is it, James? I don't know. I feel a disturbance in the force." Well, no, well, that, that's just blatantly wrong. Oh, there's things you can't do in animation. Okay, yeah. If you have a budget, you're Disney, and you're doing your 100th film. You give them no limit to what they to what their budget is, and they can do literally anything. Just to clarify, this movie cost 200 million dollars to make. And where is My it? God. <laughs> and just to compare, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish, a movie that arguably has the same art style, only like 10 times better than this movie, only cost 100 million dollars, if less. 
Razor, I appreciate you trying to not give them money by like getting it on whatever website you're using. You know, cool, wink, wink. But could you maybe get a version that's finished rendering? <laughs> right. Something's missing here. Ugh. I think I remember your father. I do also like that they had the nerve to say that around the same time that the new Miyazaki film was in theaters. Yeah, the Miyazaki film won the Golden Globe for Best Animated Feature. How about that? And Wish... I, I, mean, I can't believe Wish got nominated. That's cr That blew my mind. Like, How did Wish get nominated for Golden Globe? That's crazy. That's true. Didn't get, didn't get nominated was, for the Oscar, that's for sure. Because Mickey dressed up like Minnie for one of the old executives. All I dreamed about was him getting better. A dying parent died from some unconfirmed illness. Never seen that before in Disney. I should, no one should ever have to see their dreams destroyed <clears throat> before their eyes. No one should have to live their life feeling the pain of that loss every day. Well, if only we get to see them live with that loss every day. Yeah, except for her one friend, like the depressed guy. Who's just tired all the time. That's all it is. He's just tired all the time. Which, like, that makes him the most relatable character in the movie, honestly. All you have to do to get hired is apparently bring up the person's past trauma. And let them, like, dump it all over you. And then it's like, they'll hire you. Didn't the, that YouTuber boogie something, didn't he try that? And he just got kicked out immediately. <laughs> yeah, but he, in Wish, he would have fucking, like, gotten the job. <laughs> yeah, like, I remember Boogie, like, brought up, like... He had, like, a real, he had, like, a criminal record and stuff like that. And they were, like... Yeah, you don't bring that up at a job interview, man. That's weird. You don't do that. No, apparently, no. Wish says you do. Put put his audio over her <laughs> telling a uh, big, sexy magic man here all her backstory. Oh it, god, it that would be really funny. Disabled, <laughs> disabled. I shot someone. Uh, don't look up my name. Yeah, don't don't bring up anything. I'm actually obsessed with how he shows this girl his like deep dark secret. No, no, After knowing her for 30 seconds. Are... Yeah, I know you've you fucked around with my books and everything, but you, you I you bring up your dad who is never brought up again for the rest of the movie, so like I trust you enough. But no, no, they are a part of your heart. That's the the one good song. This is yeah, we're about to get a song here, and it's it's both the best song in the movie and also the most pointless and mismatched song in the movie. Like it's a good song. It really is a good song, but like it makes no sense to be here at all it's hard to explain like you'd have to know about the backstory but like because this song was supposed to be a love song uh between asha and another character who was cut from the film okay but then they decided well the song is good but like not good movie wise so let's like let's include it in the movie have it between asha and the king for some reason who have no connection right now and it's we'll change the lyrics up slightly and yeah, now now people can play it at their wedding and stuff like that, which which is the whole point of the song. Why would you have a romance song between the king and a random chick he just met? Who's seventeen, by the way? It's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that makes it better. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's not a love song anymore, Shade. It's not anymore. They changed it slightly to where it's not about the love anymore. It's about loving the wishes. You know? They changed one word. They changed, they changed one, one word. word in the song. <laughs> you know what? I love that. I, I love it. I wish they'd just thrown the, the song by Ed Sheeran thinking out loud in here, but once in a while they just stop the song and go, but it's about wishes. Happiness was a tangible thing. It would be That's a fucking change of voice. That's Chris Pine singing. Oh, well, for real? Yeah, he's actually a good singer. Yeah, they, they do their best. Like, we'll give them credit, all the credit in the world. Chris Pine did his absolute best with this character. Like, he did such a good job. It's just the writing sucks. Like, he tried 100. No, no, no. He gave it his all. Everybody's delivery is good. I, I I don't have any... I mean, Disney at least hires good actors and actresses. I mean, they got that shit down, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, like... But say it right now, Chris Pine did absolutely his best for this character, despite how awful he's written. But yeah, why is he just saying the wishes right now in front of her for no reason? So Asha can join in because it's a duet. I do like how one lady's wish is to play the violin. I'm like, you can just do that. <laughs> doesn't have to be. Right. <laughs> that's another good point. Like, <laughs> that's another good point. So many of these wishes are like, people can just like learn them on their own. They don't have to like, they don't have to have the wish inside of them to want to do that. Like they just like, it should have some like, okay. So I guess when the wishes are taken away, it's like they forget they want to do that. But it's like. <sighs> Like this ties into the villain's motivation. It's really stupid. We'll we'll get to it later. 
people gotta have multiple wishes. Oh yeah, I forgot the lyric is fucking terrible. Felt this? No, I haven't. I hope. That lyric is so bad. Is that what she just said? Yeah. Felt this? No, I haven't. I hope. Ugh. Felt this? No, I haven't. I hope. Well, I, I just don't know why that. I mean, like, I, I get what they're trying to go for, like the oh, little little quick run thing, but it's like either there's too many or too few syllables in there. Just something about that doesn't feel right. Yeah, that's why I changed the lyric in my rewrite that to make is it. That's an issue with all the songs. I know that's every song is like that. They have they have lyrics like that, and it's so bad. They it's all like wanted they... to write that one song. That's why I rewrote it in my rewrite for my for me and Priam's video for a song cover. We actually rewrote the song and changed the lyric to. I've never felt this way, so I hope. Like, it just flows better and sounds like an actual coherent sentence. You know? Well, see, that's where you, that's why you're not a professional songwriter. You didn't cram a paragraph's worth of words in there. Well, this, that's the thing about this music. It wants to be like Lin Manuel Miranda. He wrote the music for Encanto, which is great. The music in Encanto is fantastic. But they wanted so bad to make this like Encanto. But it's like, why didn't you just bring back Lin Manuel Miranda again? You know? We don't he's need, we don't need. Lot. Yeah, he was writing Scuttlebutt. God. And he's not coming back. Him. He's not coming back from Moana 2, which was announced like two weeks ago. They're, they're all in their own world. Right? They're both in their own world right now. They're just like facing away from each other. Imagine walking in on this. So apparently the song can be taken like, like... Yeah, it's like the song can be taken like multiple different contexts. Like it can be between two lovers or it could be between like a father and a daughter or something like that, you know? Like that's kind of what they were intending, I guess. Like, it doesn't have to be directly a love song. It can maybe be, like, between a father and a child or something like that, no, you know? Course, it, it, it somewhat comes across. It, it's it's totally fine. It, they they did it sanitized enough. It's just that I think it's funny because it's just they're facing away from each other and basically singing to different corners of the freaking office. <laughs> right? Like, it's just so weird. It's so out of place. Oh, God, yeah, there could be animatics for Jack Frost and <laughs> Elsa, couldn't there? I haven't seen any yet, though. At least I haven't. Just give it time. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I've seen Jelsa ones. I've seen Jack Frost and, like, I don't know, OC self-insert or something. <laughs> oh, my favorite. Oh, that's the best. Those are the best ones. <laughs> Who needs a pre-established shit when I can make my own? It's Elsa. Look, it's Elsa with an earring and a red stripe through her hair. And she's black. <laughs> Wait, what? And she's in love. <laughs> deep, deep love. Deep, deep love with Jack Frost. Yeah. There's a lot of animatics for this song, though, that are really good. Yeah, with Asha and the, and the star, star boy. boy. Yeah. You know? I love how that's what's like makes him want to give her the job. It's like, well, you uh, fucked around with my spell books and everything, but we shared a backstory about your dad who we'll never bring up again, and we sang some random song to the balls in my office. So, uh, yeah, you know? I think we this did, is. We know. did kill those harmonies, so. You know, maybe I've I just never said heard somebody harmonize with me like that. I just said in the most fucked up way. It's like, you sang to my balls, Asha, so good job. You got the job. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you, I'll tell you what, you have the job. Just don't tell my wife what has transpired here today. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I, just, I, I didn't mean it at first when I said it. It's like it just, re after I said it, I realized, oh, this could be, this could be taken a really fucked up way, can't it? Oh, I'm waiting, to see one of the, I'm waiting to see the huge wish made out of Bubble Buddy. Whereas it is my responsibility to only grant the wishes I am sure are good for Rosas. You know, the king kind of has a point, you know? Like, that's kind of a major hole in the story of this movie. It's like the villain actually has a very good point, you know? Yeah. I'm confused. This, this is the other thing, because I said it, like I said, I watched your video, but I also, I heard very, the whispers of what his motivation was going to be. I was hoping maybe something else in there. And at first I thought they were going that way. He's like, you know, he's being kind of a blatant asshole. It's like, you know, you, you take away their, their good feelings. It's like, yeah, you could just give them back. I mean, that, that doesn't make sense. But then he makes a very, very good point. Regardless of all that, it's like, what do you mean? Just, like, I, I can't just grant them. And depending on the wish, I can't just give them back. Some of them are fucking terrible. <clears throat> yeah, too bad we don't get to see any actual terrible wish to justify that. Like, he's got to, like, the good point is there, but the movie doesn't take the time to actually showcase his point, you know? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. examine that gray area. Yeah, there's a definite nuance to his motivation, which I think could have been really cool for a Disney villain to see, but we don't see all it. He had, all he had to do was be like, let me show you something. Pull out a little bubble. This young Austrian wanted to be a painter more than anything else. <laughs> but he had another wish. Here's this little man from Georgia. He, uh, with a funny mustache and everything, he wants to be the ruler of Russia. 
You didn't even know what that happened? No. Sorry, they don't even explain that. They could have said that his kingdom or his previous town or whatever was destroyed by like a malevolent wish, but they don't even go there. So there's no example of what he's talking about. Exactly. Though, it's just a missed opportunity. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. It's just a bad opportunity. It's just a missed opportunity. And like it, like I said in the beginning, I, 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 he, he came across across way too pleasant when he walked in, like way too pleasant, like like hyper good guy level. Like it was just yeah. awkward. Now that he's like, I decide. It's like it just doesn't. No, I don't buy it. Trust me, it gets worse. It gets way worse. The movie goes on. Seat Asha with you on the main stage. Oh no, 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 it's okay. I insist. Oh no, he's gonna grant a wish. How awful. Do they ever establish that it's mandatory to give your wish over, or can you choose to keep it if you want to? No, I think they did that in the opening song. It's like, you have to do it to live here. It was in that opening okay. song that sucks, dick. Okay, then. I'm, I'm confused. So she always knew this was, was the case. She she knew it was the case, but yeah, she didn't... Everyone knows this was the case. Yeah, it's, and on top of that, it's like, everyone's still very happy. That's another thing. Everyone is perfectly cool with living their lives without their wish there's like no stakes at all in what he's doing like that's there's nothing to it well yeah it's like oh they forget their no, wish afterward the character... they were willing to give it up yeah oh no i was just gonna say that the only character who actually seems to be affected by this is simon everyone else as you guys are saying is fine and even then he's just a little tired that's all it is it's not like he's not like crippled he's just tired all the time now which like give him some get the guy some coffee you know he'll live a little espresso boom movie over Oh no, it's not your grandfather. Someone gets their wish granted. But I also don't understand why this even comes as a shock because it's established that he only does one a month, right? Yeah. So isn't it logical that not everyone is going to get their wishes granted? At some point, wouldn't he, wouldn't he just end up granting all the wishes anyway? Because like he's been doing this for like years, yeah, yeah, I mean, apparently. Die first. I don't know, it's weird. Me would have been a much better case. Look at the food on this plate. It looks flat as hell. I don't even know. I can't even make out what it is. I thought they were eating pie for a minute. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's like food. And then I saw the cake. And I'm like, oh, so they did make fucking cake then. But look how look how shitty that cake is. They could have had a much better one if they had just made cake today. I'm just saying. I can't even tell what's here. There's a whole other movie. The plate in front of the goat. It looks like I don't even know what. I can't tell what that's supposed to even be. Food like, png no, dot two. It's like like a salad of some kind. A gross ass salad. You know, you know, Asha could just tell him right now, your wish was to play the guitar. And then he could be like, oh, that's easy. Just give me the guitar. I can learn to play it myself right now. It wouldn't be that hard. Like, no, be that I'm easy. Confused. It's like, well, that's I'm confused because like, oh, your, your, your father's wish is to, create, is to create something to inspire the generation. But he's literally playing like a lute or something. So it's not vague. So, I mean, maybe he should have just wished different. Like instead of just saying, Oh, I just want to create something like maybe focus up your dream a little more when you give up your wish. I don't but know. Like that's, that's, that's kind of the point. Like the King is like, he makes up a bunch of bullshit. Like he's, he's in his own, he's stuck up his own ass. That's the thing that it is stupid. That's the point. Like he's lying. It doesn't, he has no reason to. Yeah. He's just being a dick. That's it. Which like, they want to like have a cross between having a backstory for the villain and him just being an asshole for no good reason. It's like they want to give him a reason, and then they don't want to give him a reason. They just go back and forth, and it makes no sense half the time. Why, why would you want me to know a wish that can never be? But I didn't... But it's your wish. Are you trying to break my heart, child? This brings up a good point. It's like the, king, the guy was living a perfectly happy life before that happened. If anything, it's Asha's fault why he feels that way now, not the king's. You know? Yeah, the king, the king, you just proved his point. He gave it up willingly, knowing it might not come true, living in blissful ignorance. <clears throat> you don't have to agree with it. I mean, hell, if you want, he, I mean, it's not like, the worst part is he didn't erase your mind when you left, when he showed you the truth, the literal truth, the thing you already knew, but just, you know, showed it to you more personally, and then you showed that you really, really didn't agree with it. You know, you could just leave the city. There are probably other nations and stuff. He didn't erase your mind or anything. He just said, all right, if you don't like it, you can leave. You don't gotta be here. I mean, that's that, that's what I would do anyway. You can leave if you don't like it. Everyone else has agreed that this is fine. Yeah, like there's everyone is happy in Rosas despite missing their wishes. There's like no stakes. It doesn't matter what the quote unquote villain of the story does. He, it's his. He can do what he wants. There's no no one cares. 
He's just a bit of a... I mean, it's supposed to be this kind of they don't know what they're missing thing, but again, like we've said now, there's no actual contrast between right. what they have right now and what they're missing. Oh, you sure do need room to grow, don't you? The be the greatest lyric ever written in Disney history right here. And throw caution to every warning sign. Throw caution to every warning sign? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. It's throw I caution like to, to caution the wind. Tape over stop signs. Yeah, exactly. It's like throw caution to every warning sign. That means you're being careful and weary of what's to come when like the whole point of this song is about her breaking away and like defying everyone around her. That lyric makes no sense. Why couldn't the lyric be like run past every warning sign or defy every warning sign? Literally so many ways you could fix that lyric, but they just didn't because they want to sound fancy. But it makes no sense. I, I'm literally just envisioning the that old Nigihiga video where he goes park in reverse while going forward. And now he just immediately snaps. He's like, what the fuck was that? Oh, my, my balls jiggled. I believe I have just been threatened. Who would dare threaten you? I don't know, the one person who knows about the wishes? It has to be that random 17-year-old girl. Right? He should realize, like, right away. It's like, wait, it could be that girl that knows about this stuff now and uh, said this was wrong. Joy and hope, possibility and wonder inside the most loving light. Imagine if I, we did get Starboy and we got that romance after all. That would have meant something kind of sweet right there. I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Can I be loving? I sound ridiculous, don't I? Can I be loving? They're, they're just shitting on it now. Don't we always get some kind of obligatory, like, funny haha -ha chase scene between the main character and some... Yes. In Disney, yeah, it's, it's always a chase scene. We always get this shit. That is why people made the AI joke. Is this so far? This movie has pretty much felt like every Disney movie in the past. Yeah, it's like even Asha is like Asha is pretty much reminiscent of every Disney pro tag for the last fifteen years. Like like Rapunzel, Anna. Yeah, she's Rapunzel. She's Anna. She's uh, she's Mirabelle and stuff like that. Like it's the same she thing. Is the, what do you call that? It's like you're the you're the adorable you're less than the sum of your parts. You're ador the adorable personality. Yeah. What, what? Snap its head off before it's too late. But you you shouldn't look so happy. That thing is like probably hot as fuck. It's grabbing your ears. It didn't work. When does the magic happen? Huh? Ooh, something's happening. I'm talking. I remember when they said if only you could talk. <laughs> I think this song is worse than the villain song. Oh god, yes. This is the worst song in the movie by far. This is the actual worst this song. This is this is this is on par with Coco Melon and shit. This is a real baby song. It it reminds me so much of like that law of that fucking sharing song from All Dolls Go to Heaven. It's like I don't know if either of you saw the video on my video on All Dolls Go to Heaven. I hated that song with a passion. You know, when like oh, Charlie's giving Charlie's giving the pizza to those puppies and stuff. No, I totally forget that one. Oh god, it's such a terrible song, and this song is exactly like it. Ending with, how is any of this possible? Just relax. Oh, yeah, rem remember the question she just asked. Remember the question she just asked for the a after the song. Have you ever wondered why and look up at the sky for answers? Christianity? Ugh. Oh, remove the music. This is scary. <laughs> Just starts mauling her <laughs> right away. <laughs> oh my god, that's the good ending. <laughs> that didn't answer any of her questions. They're not answering a single question she had, no. Here's a little fun allegory. That gets me excitatory. This might sink into an end Excitatory. Now I know that's not a word. <laughs> I think I just... Yeah, no, I think I had an aneurysm. <laughs> uh, this song is really bad. This song You're is a star. This song is yeah. ass. There's, there, there's, that, there's actually another really bad lyric coming up. It's really, really bad. It's kind of funny bad, admittedly. I, I kind of laugh at it. I'm a star. Watch out, world, here I are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I kind of, it's kind of funny bad, that one. It's like, watch out, world, here I are. <laughs> it's like, it's so forced. No, 
I'll tell you what it is. It feels like they know what they're doing and they don't give a fuck that you know. It's like, I, I guess they were trying to be silly. Like, they didn't want to take it that seriously. But it just sounded so cringe. It was not funny at all. It was very cringe. Watch out, world. They hired us. They didn't even check our background information. <laughs> well, the songwriters, they, they worked with, like, Justin Bieber and stuff. Is yes, this, it's um, Julia Michaels. Yeah, they worked, is this, is this, they worked with... Uh, is this supposed to instill confidence? Yeah, I, I guess so, yes. I mean, I at least know that now that they are real professionals in the industry. Like, they worked I with... Wouldn't say that I would hire... Yeah. I wouldn't say I'd hire them. Nah. That didn't answer any of my questions. Don't mention it, Bambi. It's all good. He just called him Bambi. Oh, did he just call him Bambi? Is that... Did y'all hear it? They called it Bambi. Oh, I heard. That was Bambi. Oh, yeah, the bear's gone. Wow. Do you grant yep. wishes? Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Obviously not. Forget I asked. Like, I'm just not sure how this Why is it that every because person she meets who knows magic, she immediately asks them to grant family. her wish? Why doesn't the ma why, why doesn't the wish grant wishes? It's a magic star. That's the whole point of their existence, to grant wishes, right? Well, it doesn't. No, she just said it does. They just confirmed the the star doesn't grant wishes. But the, but the, the, but... So why is it even here if it can't grant wishes? Why did it come down? What does it matter that she's connected to the stars if the thing doesn't even grant wishes? So it doesn't even do the thing. Right. I, uh... The whole point of the that song she sang, not the one we just heard, the one before, was about making a wish on the star, and it turns out the star doesn't even grant a wish. It doesn't even do anything. Razor, I just think you're not being who you. I, I just think you're not aring who you are. <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're, you're not ising who you are. You're not. Come on, man. I'm not who I is. I'm not as I should buy. I don't know. This is so dumb. Yeah, man. Uh, you should write for Disney. Ugh. When did you draw that? Magnifico showed me his balls and then fired me. <laughs> everything, everything I do is to make sure that never happens again. Again, he's got a backstory. So why is he an asshole? What is that? <laughs> yeah, what is that exactly? Yeah. You know? Guys, when you're, threatened, you're not being who you is right now. It is an First, unspecified evil you book. You must protect yourself. That he just has for some reason. Not like yeah, it's like, where did he get it? We know nothing of where did he get it? Why does he have it? Who fucking knows or cares? Razor, I beg of you, please. Do not kill 15 orphans. If you want answers about the law. What? I see. I I say, she, she said, yeah, that, that line, she said it with the conviction of like a toddler who is doing their first play. I love it. I beg of you, put that book down. Like um, she wants him to come to dinner. <laughs> put the book down, all right? I know you want to like commit genocide, but like, come on, the steak's ready. Like, it's got to get cold. It is, it's amazing. Jeez. I love it. Yes, 10 out of 10. Can you stop squiggling, please? You're drawing attention. <laughs> Hi, hello. You know, I'm just uh, gonna. I'm just gonna drown this cat real quick. <laughs> what it looks like she's gonna do. Oh, please stop her. <laughs> they could have. They could have made that a joke, but they didn't. You know, the star, the star boy, the original star boy. He was supposed to be like a shapeshifter. He like a, he could take like a human form. You know, wouldn't that have made things oh, that a lot more interesting? interesting? Yeah. You know, would have been way more interesting. What is going on in there? Why are you all sweaty? You can tell us anything. Move, or we break the door down. No, no, no. It's like, fine, if you want to see a chicken orgy, then fine. I'll open the door. After everything happened... I started an illegal wish. cockfight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just want to, I just want to, like, cut to the audience reaction. It's a bunch of, like, dry mouth, bored kids, just, like, oh, mouth agape, waiting for mom to pick them up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a five-year-old would be like, this was a movie. Maybe even the movie of all time. It's certainly a movie. I still don't get why the star itself can't grant wishes, but it can, like, make chi animals talk. It can make chickens do fucking or big-ass musical Broadway dance numbers and stuff, but, like, it can't grant That's wishes. That's why I'm confused. That's why I'm confused, because when you said that, I was like, he's got to be wrong, because this thing's literally granting wishes. Like, the, the freaking goat, you know, didn't really right? correctly wish it, but clearly wanted to communicate. <clears throat> right? The goat wished to talk, and the star was like, okay. But when Ash has got a wish, it's like, and then it makes you wonder, what exactly does Asha even want? Can you, can anyone answer that question? What exactly is Asha's motivation exactly? What is she, what is her end goal in this movie exactly? Kill the king for not giving her a job. 
He wants to assassinate the king. <laughs> just a girl can dream. <laughs> she wants to kill the king. Like down with the fucking patriarchy and established communism where everyone gets their wish. Everyone is equal in this kingdom. She wants to establish communism. She just puts up a guillotine. But she's the equalist. <laughs> she's the Vladimir Lenin of this movie. Yesterday, I kind of challenged the king. What? It's uh, complicated. And... I touched his balls and he didn't like that one bit. <laughs> What would you do with he said, that? nobody but my wife touches my balls, oh, and uh, we'll then he sent me out. Stars, please don't break anything. Yes, don't back. Oh, just see that? It's making the Mickey Mouse ears. Look at that. Get it? But it literally just, but it did the same thing he did and made those scissors be all magical. It, it can grant with... Oh, no. Right. Okay, how about this? Nothing or this. This or Girl thinks she's a magician because she found a, a magical being. <laughs> When this movie, this movie would have been so much better if Asha was made the apprentice of the king and learned magic herself, you know? Like, that would have made for a far yeah. more engaging story. Like, she I could have been... Genuinely, I just want... I, I just want them to take the star out. That'd be so cool. Or at I least... Re or, or at least replace it with a star boy and actually have him do something, you know? Right? Maybe he teaches her magic. Well, he does technically later, but it's it's kind of dumb. Okay, go to the gym. But what do you... What Fucking some of these wishes. What is that wish to have muscles? But you have to focus. I want to eat. Pop I want to be like Popeye. Did you see the star? He like farted pixie dust. You see it? Watch. You call that shit shitsy dust? He just shat. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yep. Wow. Okay. Real cute. Be with the wishes. Nothing but good news. Oh, here we go. The villain song. Got the best song in the movie. <sighs> peep the name, I'm magnificent. Peep the name. We're in like an eight. We're like at some 19th century place, and he's saying peep the name. He's like a 50 year old man, and he's just peep the name. It's like it's like hello, fellow kids. I mean, I paused at the right time. It's like peep. I cringe when people my age say it. I don't understand why they would put it in this movie. Uh, it's like peep the name, everybody. Hello, fellow kids. Peep the name. I'm magnificent. Like all right. Sure, you are. I let you live here for free, and I don't even charge you rent. I let you live here for free, I and even I don't charge even charge you rent. Yeah, it's like that's the yeah that's what letting me live here for free means. I you don't I don't pay rent. This feels like it was written by someone's child. Like, it was the, it, like they helped a little, but like the child was tra tasked with writing a Disney song. They don't even know what rent is. Right. They think they think renting means renting a movie or something. Oh, I hate that vocal effect so much. Yeah, the uh, the chorus is just yeah, they so. Think of like other lyrics. Yeah, the chorus is just so repetitive. It's like this is the things I get. Da 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 da. That's the chorus. That's all it is. I'm sorry, a second ago his wife saying that was enough for him, but now he needs his own. Oh, did you hear that lyric? Did y'all hear that? The prob, yeah. Not even a real word. I can't even finish words now. What'd you say, uh, Priya? No time when you're beautiful and handsome. The prob. Um, I was saying that I don't understand half the things he's saying in this song, because they are not things that anyone ever questioned him on. Nobody ever called him out on being vain. No one called him out on, like, not being powerful enough, whatever he's singing about. Right. They just need to expedite his evil arc that isn't an arc, so they have to make him upset with them for daring to ask questions that don't upset his control at all. Again, that's, like, the whole... That's the whole problem with the with Magnifico. It's, like, he... It's, like, again, they gave him this backstory of, like, he had, like, a home that was destroyed by some vague evil and whatnot, and then they, they like, suddenly just drop that and make him into a petty bitch. And it's like, what's the point of the backstory if he's just gonna be some petty dickhead, you know? If you want to be a petty dickhead, then fine. But like, have it make sense, you know? Don't give him the backstory and all that stuff, you know? Pick one or the other and stick with it. I swore I'd never do this, but I'm hypnotized by how these pages flip because I refuse to have my power. Oh my God, it. stop it. Well, oh, that's right. Our song can't be intense. We gotta get back to our shitty, simplistic pop beat. Right. Like it was actually kind of picking up there. It was getting a little better, and then they just drop it to go back to the pop sounds. Almost showed some humanity there. Get it? He's all corrupted and evil now. 
But if, but hold on, if the book did it, then it's still not necessarily him being evil. Right? Is it is it him being evil or is the book corrupting him? The movie never makes that clear. Like, I mean, they said it was like dark magic and stuff, but like, he was always kind of an asshole. So like, is the book just like fueling that or what? You know? It's implied that it's the book because later on his wife is like, we have to try and get the book's control out of him or whatever. Yeah. And then they don't. And they don't. We just realized he, she didn't get it, her mom's wish. She didn't get oh, her yeah. mom's, she fuck didn't get her mom, mom's wish. Yeah, fuck the mom. Like, we never find out what the mom wished for either. We never find out. Well, what the fuck? I love that too. It's like the mom was the only one showing empathy in that table scene. Mind you, I understand his frustration with her, but I'm just saying, like, she was, he was actually, like, he was the one being a quote unquote dick, but she, he gets to have his wish back. But mom, who wants to go after you and make sure you're all right and everything, fuck her. Her wish can just rot. Right? Why is the mom even here? Why is the mom even a character? She does nothing in the story. You know, drugs make people happier too. Your wish next, mama. I don't know what the long term effects of giving their wishes back is. You hear what she said? She said, I'll get your wish next. You were there. You could have just grabbed it then. Well, yeah. Oh you my think God. He's going to sneak in and take one by one and he's not going to notice. Yeah. Why not just grab multiple wishes at the same time? You know? What is this? Oh, what a gift. They should have killed All the mom. That would have at protected. least off the wishes stakes. Not knowing. The they actually killed the mom. Yeah. <laughs> I have never felt so much threat. I'm so threatened by Magnifico. He's so powerful. A bookshelf could kick down. his ass, yeah. Oh, they took him out big time. He's not even following them yet. Great powerful sorcerer, but yeah, a bookshelf really took care of him, didn't it? I was foolish to think I could change anything. I should never have. Heard. Yes. I mean, you could have just grabbed your mom's wish at the same time as your Saba's, but like, oops, the daisy yeah. there, right? Oh, but, but then Magnifico couldn't have crushed it in front of you, making him uber super villain or, or whatever. Because if you hadn't had that, I guess he would have just arrested you and the movie would be over. I guess. I don't know. The mom is so useless to the story. <laughs> the dad has never been brought up again. Even the Saba is kind of useless as a character himself, despite being the catalyst of the story. He doesn't contribute anything to the main story at all. Everyone is at risk because of Magnifico. At, at risk of what? Shark! What? No, no, I, I, I have not seen the shark. I'm just practicing. I really hate him. I hate the goat. Yeah, the goat's kind of bad. One branch of mountain ash bathed wow. in Talon's potion. Full supervillain in like two Holden scenes. I'm proud of you, Disney. I mean, I guess it's like, it's kind of... I guess I don't, I'm only, I think I'm only saying this because it's been so long since we've had a Disney villain that was this campy and over the top and stuff. It's kind of fun seeing him like that. Yeah, go ahead. I actually agree with you on that. It is. Yeah. I, I'm more so saying it's only weird because he started off so bland but like nice, and then they just in like two scenes turned him into super like psycho villain. Right. If they're gonna go full out, like, and it's even then they they're still restraining themselves. Like, you want to have a book turn him evil? Fine have the book turn him evil i mean just fucking go for it it's like and it's like it's still like this, the stakes still really aren't fully there it's like i guess now it's a little worse because he's destroying the wishes themselves but like everyone's just like a little sad now it's like oh no they're kind of like uh what's his name i don't even remember what his name is the guy the older of the dwarves uh fucking for jumpy friends. i don't know what was his name simon uh Simon, that was his we, name. I don't remember we, any of their names. Uh, the dwarves characters. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just call them like sleepy, dumbass, fuck face, and idiot brain. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. Their They're names literally either. just the dwarves. That's all they are. They have no names. <laughs> that's all they are. Oh man. But yeah, like I said, like it's. That's the thing with Magnifico. It's like he's just two completely separate characters. Like in the first half and the second half of the movie. Like he's a completely different character now. I just realized her hair is like headphones. Why is her hair stylized like headphones? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I've been thinking that since the start. It's, <laughs> I hate it. I'm sorry, it's, girl. It's not working. <laughs> Take them off. It's like it's like they want to find a balance between like typical braid and Princess Leia. It looks so girl, it goofy. Just looks like she's listening to better music, and I'm jealous. 
Like she's got like, <laughs> she's got disturbed going on in those headphones. Hell yeah. If your husband was singing, this is the, the thanks I get. To destroy you'd like fucking I headphones. Built. Like yeah, I'm putting some headphones on. I'm just gonna listen to some. Some inside the fire real quick, or maybe some unstoppable from Disturbed. Hell yeah. Oh my god, god he's at it again. <laughs> she's used to it at this point. <laughs> That's why she's always got them on, because she can never predict it. I have believed in you from the moment we met. We built this kingdom together. Did you? Nothing more important than that. I wish we got to see that, like maybe their love story. Maybe see a villainous couple. You mean, you mean like in the original story? I yeah. That. Yes. They were gonna be an That's evil the, couple. That, yep, I remember I, I, th that. I also heard. I don't know yeah. if it was your video or the fucking thing I was reading. All I know is it pisses me off that there's like a better movie. And as I'm watching this one, I see what people are saying. This shit is just—it's like the outline to a good movie is there. Yeah, it's like every every single piece is there. The idea is fantastic. It's just so bare boned. They don't do anything with anything. They care more about hitting the basic plot beats of a Disney movie and the typical tropes of Disney without actually do anything with them. I'm on the hunt! <laughs> Telly hell, chap! Taking uh, the queen's villainy out is that you know, she really has nothing to do. I know, she has no character in this movie other than just being supportive wife. You are all probably wondering why... I'm wearing a mustache. It's funny. Yes. <laughs> Laugh, That's children. Give a big cheer. <laughs> Shade, I'm gonna let you guess who who was the traitor, who did it. This also got spoiled, but I forget who specifically. It was one of her friends. Well, one of the friends that like helped her. I I, I just don't remember which one. Uh, Simon one of the dwarves. Right? What? What if she didn't listen to them here and was like, Magnifico, there was the traitors. Yeah, what if you're wrong? Yeah, right. Right, and she just looks depressed because she has like seasonal depressive disorder. She took a real shot in the dark with that, didn't she? Oh, it's funny because my butt found it. Ha ha, his butt found it. Get it, guys? It was with his butt. The song is okay. Like it's it's kind of catchy. Like the drums are like the drums are good. She's had that cookie in her pocket for days, just admiring it for some reason. I was gonna say, did she seriously just stare at a cookie dramatically? Yeah. You know, time's of the essence, guys, you know? Like, song's nice and all, but, like, don't y'all have the actual wishes to go after now? The queen literally just finds them out of nowhere, no explanation. Like, yeah, I heard you guys from- I heard you guys from, like, two miles away. Can you tone it down? You must be quiet, or he will find you, you morons. She- she- ne it's never even explained how she found them, she just did. Endgame wishes. <laughs> did did the queen ever give up her wish? That's a good question. Fucking one percent never got to give nothing up. <laughs> You're right. Fucking <laughs> fucking rich white people. Oh, fantasy land in the sky, huh? How about Neverland? Guess Peter Pan. Perfect nanny for yeah, your four that one. children. Popping this one. Oh. <laughs> Popping. Oh, very yeah, cute. there you go. Pop it. Get it. Ha ah, ha ha ha. Very funny. Dude, these feel a little too on the nose. Come on, guys. So much for true love. That's just what Disney <laughs> thinks nowadays, anyway. I know, right? Disney kind of hates romance if you think about it nowadays. When's the last movie we got that, like, where romance was, like, the actual, like, plot of the story? You well, know? I will say, if, if, considering they almost they had to rewrite a song and shoved it in between an old man and a 17-year-old girl. I will admit, I'm kind of scared to see Disney try romance again. I think they need to be sat down through a course and reminded how they used to do it. Like, the last movie that, like, focused on romance was Tangled. Like, Frozen had a romance, but that was the side plot. Yeah, Tangled was, like, the last movie from Disney that actually had a romance in it. That was, like, the central focus of the story. I'll take it. I'll take it. Give me, give me one. It's been almost... We're, we're nearing... We're over 14 years now. Can we, I... I think we're all ready. I think that's why a lot of people really liked Elemental, because that was a romance story. Well, yeah, I mean, lo love is, is an almost universal emotion. Any right? kind of love, really. Love yeah. is very powerful. Yeah, no, everybody loved to see the villain come back. Like, or at least everybody wants the villain to come back. It's like, why doesn't people want romance, too? It's like, I thought romance in Disney was just as iconic, if not more so, than the villain. Ironic, they called it the Disney Renaissance. What was Renaissance most known for? Romance. 
was one of their it was one of their well then the plague but no <laughs> no but, yeah uh, and all and all those movies had and all those movies had romance of some kind little mermaid beauty and the beast aladdin lion king yeah. uh it's not a requirement but i mean i'd like to see one yeah you know, they just seem to have abandoned it i hear what you mean like yeah not every story needs a romance but like i would love to see disney give a romance story again as soon as he leaves the castle, you go help. Where does she even get that that hooded shirt and stuff? It was oh, here's where here's where Star gives her magic. Okay. Okay, so he can just do that. Yeah. Right. Wouldn't it have just been better if she was a sorceress the whole time? You know, like she just had that ability from the beginning. It's you know. Like the, honestly, honestly, yeah. This this being like the secret origin of the fucking fairy godmother would have been fine. That's what this is supposed to be. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, that's no. what this is supposed to be, yeah. No, I reject okay. that. <laughs> they also did the typical, like, race swapping of a princess or a female character from Disney. Here, obsidian oil for protection from the pages. This reads like a recipe book for the foul. It's like a woman on Facebook. Like a, like a mom on Facebook. It's like Gwyneth Paltrow Facebook. with her fucking snake oil stuff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that reminds me of that John Trump video where they, he was analyzing Gwyneth Paltrow's snake oil stuff. And he was reading all those funny names of like he was like, okay, I have some names here. It's like some some of these names are actual Gwyneth Paltrow products, and others are stuff I made up. And he had they his were all real. He had he had his wife like guess, and then the end is like, it's like, all right, so now that we're done with that, okay, they're all real. <laughs> it's like they're all real. <laughs> Obsidian oil does sound like something she would sell. <laughs> it's really funny to me. That was really funny. I wish you were dead, points it at Magnifico. I'm just realizing, why does the king have this in his tower? Why would he have a pulley system in general? Why does he have that, period? Yeah, exactly. That's what she why said. is the roof open? Yeah, like, that's, like, that seems like a real big oversight on his part. He wants to keep the wishes contained. Why would you create a giant door that can let them out at any time? It's a bit of a security flaw. <laughs> it's just stupid. You figure at the point, people would be like, hearing the thing go crashing down, people would be like, what is happening over there? What's going on in the tower? At the, and if anybody out there has any criticisms of that, saying, oh, he wouldn't hear that from all the way out there. The man is soaked in evil vo 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 voodoo magic. I, I think I think he's got, I think he's kind of got an excuse to hear it. Not to mention, it's not actually him. Embrace forbidden magic just once, and you commit to it for eternity. That seems very convenient to not have to try to bring him back. Yeah, no redemption for the villain. Yeah, his wife is just like, fuck him. Guess we're guessing that to die. Oh dear. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. That's like some real Norm of the North writing like there. It's like Karabuya or something. Now hold on, that is very insulting to Norm of the North. Kill yourselves! Save yourselves from the movie! Oh, I would love if they'd all just die right now. I'm oh, gonna like the way the green magic looks in this movie. It actually looks kind of cool. It's like the only cool visual effect this movie's got going for it, honestly. Oh, yeah, it oh, yeah. has like a 2D vibe, right? How's the whole taking your wish into your own hands working out for you? Oh, wait! Just chucks her off the tower. Mirrors, mirrors on the wall. Who is the handsomest? Me! I'm sure that line will be in the, the Hall of Great you Disney Villains. Yeah, it's very out of nowhere. He just They're wants power and control, I guess. I don't know. I guess his whole motivation is just have everyone be chained to the floor. I guess. I guess it's, he's just batshit crazy now. Like, there's nothing to it. Yeah, like... I know, but, like, considering he had that backstory in the opening... Motivations. Yeah, considering he had the motivation in the opening, it's like, they just forgot about it. It's like, this would have been fine if, like, you didn't give him that backstory. If the whole point was to never redeem him and have him just be an evil asshole the whole movie through, then this would have been fine. But now I'm just confused. It's like, well, what about the backstory? Like, shouldn't he... Shouldn't he be redeemed? At some point, you know? I don't know. It's... Well, that's the thing. The, oh no, we can't redeem him now because we we just finally realized people fucking got sick of that. So let's just do let's just do a big evil villain. It's okay. Just keep the motivation. It doesn't matter. Nobody's gonna care. Right. It's just confusing at all. So hell. We are. Oh my god. Stars. Oh my god. So uh... it's I'm excited, Tori guys. <laughs> 
That's gonna be our big thing. That's gonna be our saying. We are stars. Right. He actually sings him to death, though. That's literally what happens. They just sing him. That's how they defeat him. Oh my god, I want to edit where he just chucks her off after it, like she starts singing like that. So I make this, so I make this wish to have something he could probably just nuke every last one of them if he really wanted to. Instead of taking those cheap right. pot shots. This really should have just killed them. Big ass far cloud just kills him. Like out of Marmaduke. Anybody else getting those vibes of like when the little guy knocks out the big dude in the movie and it's like, yeah, that really happened. Right. Why would it pull him in? The, the mag oh, okay. Fine. Because it's dark magic like and we just gotta... You know, they could have just thrown him off the edge and killed him. Like a yeah, tradition... Like a tr that would have been like a traditional Disney death where characters... Are the villain always falls to his death, you know? Like the evil witch of Snow White, Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, Mother Goth from Tangled. You know, this that would have... too soft for that. I know, Disney's too soft for that shit. They're not gonna kill a villain. Even though it'd make perfect sense to. It's like that scene from Prince of Egypt, the Passover. <laughs> and it kills the firstborn of every one. <laughs> Oh my god. We should have never listened to you, Asha. Now our kingdom is without a king and you fucking killed our firstborns. I'm so happy. I swear him saying Asha sounds like he just told you to shut up. <laughs> Don't question it, Razor. Oh, this guy. Uh, and where did they go? His are all of her friends just disappeared. They were all there in that group hug and now they're oh just missing god. in this shot. <laughs> what the happened? Recontinuity. Wow, that's like in between shots too. That's really bad. I'm so sorry. Oh, he gets redeemed, but not the king. What? After everything I've done for you, Ferognas? This is the thanks I get? Go. This is the thanks you deserve. Hang it on the wall. Yeah, for going... Yeah, for opening that book that corrupted him and stuff like that. Like, he had a good point in the opening the movie. Like, he was like... Like, he can't grant every wish. He was providing them a home rent-free, mind you. Like... Yeah, now he's just fucking trapped in there. Like, like, what if he's not evil anymore? What if... Literally, he's been in prison. Like, his soul's probably still in there. He's being, he's being like, endlessly tormented by a demon. Like, the book... Is... The book is what corrupted him. That's what the movie said. The book is what corrupted him. He's not actually evil. The book made him that way. He's not evil. He's yeah. just trapped with a spell. And the movie's just like, whatever. Who cares? It's like, fuck him. No, he was... No, Razor, he was wrong since the beginning because he should have granted all the wishes in the world. Obviously, don't be silly. <laughs> right? He should have granted all those wishes. Like, somebody wants to be a dictator? Let them. That's their wish. It's like, Ra it's Razor, like, it's... I, think you're really, I think you're really overthinking it and you're forgetting to be who you is. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm forgetting to be who I are. I forgot who I are. Exactly. Ugh. That was his fucking... It's literally Peter Pan. I could have never learned this instrument without my my wish back. Thank you for taking over an entire nation so I could get some fucking guitar lessons. And wear clothes. Oh, they just referenced Utopia there, Shane, while you were talking. Oh yeah. I dream of a utopian metropolis where all mammals are equal. And wear clothes. Get it, Utopia. But what am I supposed to do with it? Magic for you, peasant. Godmother. I mean, what else? Get it, fairy godmother. That was the joke. It was so forced. I could? You know, they couldn't... It, it could have been less forced if she was just learning how to do magic from the beginning of the movie. Then if you want to go for that she's yeah. always been the fairy godmother angle, then it would kind of make sense. You know? Fairy godmother joke in the first place. The joke doesn't... Maybe I'd missed something, but that joke just kind of came out of nowhere. Right. And that's it. Oh, this is the best scene. Directed by Chris Buck. The guy who directed... <laughs> Directed this the guy who made surfs up by the way was he directing the guy who brings the donuts in what the hell was his job? <laughs> uh, he was just dreaming of a way so he could have made another surfs up movie for us, but no He also directed frozen by the way. It's like just, it just feels vi That was soulless. Oh, yeah, it was him and Jennifer Lee, right for frozen. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think I, th I think Jennifer Lee was like a, a, a Like a, a, a leader in like the military back during the Civil War you mean Robert E. Lee? Oh, yeah, 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 that guy. <laughs> I might have gotten my history mixed up. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Well, that was Wish. What were y'all's thoughts?
it exists. I wish I could go back in time. <laughs> Uh, I wish this, that's like the best t way to describe this movie wish, right? Like, I wish it was better. I wish they went back and used the old concepts. I wish they did everything that that was or they were going to do, but then changed their minds halfway through. You know, it's like the best way to describe this movie. I wish for something better. Yeah, I mean, I think it had a lot of potential, right? Like, the potential was there. What I think happened was, like, again, this was very much like an Emperor's New Groove situation where, like, they had an idea for a movie, and then halfway through it, executives came in and were like, hey, so, like, everybody keeps bitching, saying, hey, they don't want generational trauma or twist villains anymore. They want classic villains again. So, I know the story kind of calls for this villain to have a backstory and be redeemed later, but, like, could you maybe not do that? Give fans what they want? I don't care if it makes no sense to the story, but you gotta give fans what they want, you know? It's like... All I know is I put my faith in Disney and you before you said it was bad, that I was gonna enjoy myself, and this is the thanks I get. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is the thanks I get for fucking re watching this movie. I, I guess, I, I don't know, like, I wouldn't say this was terrible. Like, there's definitely worse Disney movies. It's not even in the in the bottom 20 of Disney movies, I don't think. I mean, I've seen all the direct-to-video sequels, so this is better than those, some of them. <laughs> some of them. Like, there's a few that are better than this, like Cinderella 3, for example, 101 Dalmatians. Yeah. Like, there's a few direct-to-video sequels that is better than this, which says a lot when there's any direct-to-video sequel. Enchanted Christmas, then watch this. I'll say that. Oh, God. Like, I remember, like, a week or so ago, me and some friends watched a movie called Strange Magic. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, Priam. It's a I, Disney movie. It. Oh, you've seen it. that? Yeah. Unfortunately. Me yeah. I'd rather watch that because that's funny bad. That movie is kind of hilarious. Yeah, Shay, yeah. Was supposed to, Shay, Shay was supposed to watch that with us. Oh, no. It's just, you know, that's just, gosh darn it, you know. <laughs> I know. Shit, shit comes up. It's fine. It's no big deal. In in Strange Magic, I actually kind of like the villain in that. I mean, I know he gets redeemed at the end, but... Yeah, it's like there's... I think he's more entertaining than Magnifico. <laughs> it's almost like his motivation was established in the beginning of the movie. Gotcha. From what I remember, he was still a better... He was still a better villain. Not yeah. To, not even just because they established him in the beginning, but because, you know, I could... It, it, like, the romance didn't work any better than this... You know, the, the, this one didn't have a romance, but... You yeah. know, I mean, I, I don't know. I just preferred him as a villain overall. and that And that still right. wasn't a good movie. Yeah, I know. But at least that movie had more, like, imagination to it. Like, it had a more magical world than what we got in Wish. I mean, you had, like, an evil sorcerer. You had a, a magic star. You gave Asha powers in the last uh, 20 minutes of the movie. And all they could come up with was talking animals, uh, some big green arms, I guess. Uh, they made things bigger, like that apple or that chicken in the end. That's really all they did with their magic. They didn't really do anything that fun or inventive with it. It was a very boring movie when it comes to the magic. Like, you could do anything you want with this magic, and they did nothing with it. They did some very basic shit. Yeah, they don't even take from, like, Jafar at the end of Aladdin when he becomes a sorcerer and just goes, like, full... Full batshit crazy. Like, he turns himself into a giant cobra full and stuff. Like, that was awesome. Batshit he spits brilliant. fire. He turns into a giant cobra and stuff. He chucks a building at Aladdin. That was pretty fucking awesome. Like, that was... Like, yeah. That was imaginative. That was fun. Hell, even the... Born the loss of villain power couple. Right. We all, Again, we could have had a villain couple with uh, with Magnifico and Amaya. They both could have been evil. You could have made it to where... Cool. Or, or if you wanted to, like, go both ways, you could have made it to where, like... Like, Magnifico has the backstory, and he is redeemable in the end, while Amaya is the pure-hearted villain that just wants power and stuff like that. You could have had the best of both worlds, you know? Like, Magnifico is, like, the bottom bitch who's abused by Amaya, who wants all the power and stuff like that, and in the end, Magnifico redeems himself by fighting back. Like, you would have had your classic over-the-top villain, and you could have had your redeemable villain all in the same movie. Like, it would have been great. And the, in the animation, it's like... <sighs> It's like they wanted to do, like, a mix between 2D and 3D without, like, going the extra mile that movies like Spider-Verse or Puss in Boots The Last Wish did. And it just looks so cheap, you know? Like, it looks so unfinished. Yeah, I mean, everyone has said, right, it looks like it's just unrendered, like it's missing a layer. <laughs> like, the backgrounds, like, some shots of the backgrounds are nice. Like, the 2D thing looks nice, but a lot of shots, 
there's like again as i said in the opening there's like a lot of open space it's just it makes the world look kind of empty and dull and such and then especially later in the movie when they're in the forest at nighttime it's like there's just so much open space that has nothing going on and it's like this is a 3d movie and yet they i guess they try to like make it look like a 2d film like from a technical level but it just doesn't work because 2d and 3d are both fundamentally different animation processes but they tried to do like a 2d animated process for a 3d animated movie but that's just not going to work because again like in 2d animation like you have the 2d and you do you have the backgrounds being laid on top of each other then you have the 2d character moving at a certain pace in that layer in a specific layer whichever layer you want because if you want to try and get like a foreground or a background stuff like that you want to like lay, insert the characters in between those layers and it looks like they're trying to do that with the 3d in this movie but it's like it's 3d you don't have to do that in 3d animation everything's a model you can just place the character literally wherever you want and the camera wherever you want and there you have it it's like they're trying to do both of them it's like at, at that point just do 2d animation if you're going to try and do the same style as a 2d animated film just make the whole thing 2d or stop half-assing it and just do what Into the Spider-Verse or Puss in Boots The Last Wish did because both those movies had 2D animated... Uh, they were 3D, but they both had 2D animated stylings to it that looked great. And again, exactly. Puss in Boots The Last Wish ha only cost $100 million. It cost half of what Wish cost and made a whole lot more money. It made like nearly... It made like, like $450 million last I checked. Like, it made a lot of money. It was a box office success. Like I said, Wish is definitely an interesting failure in that... Like, it's the blueprint of a good movie, but it just... You can tell executives at Disney just really fumbled the ball and meddled with this movie so much to where they didn't have to. Yeah, it, it's a lot of studio meddling. Yeah. Like, this movie it, just... It, it, at the end of the day, it's just hollow. You know, they, they took... They sucked all the soul out of it, what little passion there was. And then, like, over half the movie feels like just without passion. Right, it's like... It's, it's sad because, like, there were clearly people who wanted to make this a good movie. Like, there are people who genuinely... There is genuine talent at Disney still. It's just the executives that just suck everything out of it. Like, literally, like, like two weeks before the movie showed up, we had that short film, Once Upon a Studio, which was fantastic. Like, it's a, it's an amazing short. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the short for that, oh, Shane. I have. You have? Like, it's and a great the, short. Yeah. Like, it's a great short. It's very cute. It's very funny. Like, there's a lot of great interactions between all the Disney characters, and, like, it's really imaginative and funny. Like... There was clearly way more heart and passion put into that short than there was in this entire film. And then, of That's course, you, and then finally you have the songs, which were, like, they weren't god-awful. Well, I'm a star is god-awful. But, um, well, I'm a, like, okay, I'm a star, and this is the thanks I get were pretty, pretty damn awful. The other songs, I guess, This Wish was fine. Uh, what was the last song that played with the drums and stuff I said was good? And knowing what I know now. That's that it. Too. Yeah, that one's okay. That one had a nice melody to it. Um, and then there was At All Costs, which is like the only good song. But even then, it kind of suffers from some of the lyrics and stuff like that. Like, never felt this way. No, Oh, that's what I wrote. <laughs> felt this, no, I haven't, I hope. <laughs> felt this, no, I haven't, I hope. Another one um, in Asha's, right at the beginning of Asha's version. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's just Woken the Madrigal again from Encanto. That's all it is. It's just Woken the Madrigal again. I honestly oh, forgot. Her opening song, yeah. I, I, I forgot that song even existed. It was just that forgettable. Like, wow. And we just watched the movie, too. Anyway, I think we're going to wrap it up. All right, final thoughts, guys? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that I think that the fact that so many people on YouTube and the internet have been doing rewrites is probably the best thing that has come out of Wish. Like, it obviously sparked a lot of inspiration in people. Right. So that's a positive spin to put on it. It's like that Alan Moore quote, that Alan Moore quote where he tells you to read bad stories as opposed to reading good ones, because reading bad stories can infinitely be more inspiring to your craft than reading good stories. Because reading, because reading nothing but watch, and this can translate to film and to the film too. If you just watch nothing but good stuff, then that can lead to plagiarism. But reading, but watching bad stuff and reading bad books. That can inspire you to take a badly written story and rewrite it to make it better. Which, like, that's clearly what everyone's done with this movie. All right, Shay, your thoughts? Viewing it on its own merits, not comparing it to anything else, 
it's fine. It's a perfectly serviceable movie. It's got problems, but whatever. The problem is that this is the 100th year anniversary movie. They snuck all these little gags in. They snuck all these little references in. And that they've touted and in its own universe wrote to be this grand, you know, this celebration of Disney's history. And when you take all that into account, and when you do compare it to anything outside of its own circle of, well, just that movie, actually, not even a circle. When you just review it on its, like, remove it from just being its own merits and look at it compared to literally anything else that's decent that Disney's put out before, it pales in comparison. It is a complete letdown. And it's a shame, because it's not the worst thing ever, and it's had so much potential, and there's even cute little references and stuff that weren't that bad and there's little things and the songs weren't the worst thing ever they were just generic and unfitting you know it had potential i can't i hate using that word it's like the thing you call an adhd child then they grow up never knowing what they did right or wrong and then they're miserable i i want to say more than just it had potential but there's just too much wrong to list in one sitting it's just everything was done wrong enough that the things that that, that, that the things that were done closest to right i wanted to see fully fleshed out didn't get fleshed out studio meddling didn't help it took an already somewhat confused but good idea and turned it into shit exactly that's uh, i made that point in my first wish video it's like you had you had all of this like this is the hundredth year anniversary it's like and that's like the thing like believe it or not a lot of people weren't even surprised that this movie was mid because like a lot of people were expecting it to be mid and they were proven right when it came out. Like, it got mixed reviews from critics. Somehow it was nominated for a Golden Globe, but thankfully it wasn't nominated for the Oscar. Um, it's like, everybody was like, eh. Meanwhile, uh, Nimona, a movie Disney canceled because it had gay in it, uh, was it very successful. Critics loved it. Audiences loved it. it was nom it's been nominated for an Oscar and everything. Like, it's getting so much love and attention. And that's, like, the funniest thing in the world to me right there. The fact that... They, a movie they didn't believe in, but was saved by another company, is doing super well right now. And the movie they thought would do well ended up bombing. It's it's Pocahontas all over again, pretty much. Yeah, it's a Lion King Pocahontas situation. Kind of, only they didn't. Only they gave up on Nimona, and another studio made Nimona entirely. But uh, pretty yeah, much, yeah. Exactly. Same with Encanto and Raya. Like, like Encanto and Raya were kind of the same shoes. Like they didn't think. Like, they really thought Raya would be the big film of 2021, but it didn't... It wasn't super successful, although, to be fair, COVID was the thing, so, like, we'll never really know. But then Encanto blew up, and it was like, oh, wow, Encanto's the big film of the year. And then they wanted another Encanto. I do... I, like, they're not doing anything with Encanto, but we're getting another Moana movie that people so desperately want, and a live-action remake of it. Uh, I'm like referring a, to this movie. They definitely tried to inject some of that flair, like you had said. Yeah, it feels, it feels they wanted this movie to be like everything, which is also a problem. You know, it wasn't just the 100, 100 year anniversary. They wanted the movie to be successful in its own merits. And they just it seems like in their attempts to reference everything from their past, they also took all their old cliches and implemented them poorly and then took all the modern cliches and implemented them exactly as they always have. And, you know, it just creates this very disgusting mesh of. Eh. Yeah, that's. Perfectly sums up. Shrug of a movie. That sums up this movie perfectly. It's like everybody wanted a 2D animated movie, and Disney was like, "No, here's your weird half half baked 2D 3D hybrid." Uh, I like pizza, but if you don't cook it all the way through, I'm not eating it. Exactly. Anyway, I think that's gonna wrap it up. So, uh, Shade uh, Priam, thanks for joining me. No problem, man. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, there are things. Uh, Priam, what exactly do you want marketed for you? Your Instagram again? Uh, yeah, you can just uh, direct people to my Instagram. All right. I guess they go to her Instagram. Shade has a YouTube channel. He makes banger reviews every once in a while. Ah, oh, it's done. <laughs> anyway, go check out my every Instagram. Every month if I don't fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Go check out my Instagram. I posted some disturbed videos recently. But anyway, that was Wish. I wish we watched something better. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay awesome as always. Rock on. This is when y'all say bye too. Oh. Bye. Bye. You ruined it.
Oh, I'm wearing a Disturbed shirt. I went and saw Disturbed last night. It was fucking awesome. Oh, sick, dude. I saw the, I saw the pictures. That, that, was, that looked fucking epic. It was awesome. I hated the way the floor was set up, though. Like, because, like, they divide the floor in half for some reason. Like, on one half in the back, you had, like, people in chairs. Which, like, most people are going to be standing up anyway. So it's like, I don't know why, why you'd even bother with that. Not... Yeah, like, other than, <clears throat> other than maybe, like... Well, guys, they bring their own chairs. Uh, so other than somebody like in a wheelchair, I don't really see anybody not jumping up and down at a Disturbed concert. Yeah. There was and the front. And, yeah. Simon and Garfunkel. Of course. Then there was the front half, of course. <laughs> yeah, they played the uh, they played that song, The Sound of Silence, that night. Oh, sick. Is his, is his voice just as good live as it was as it, as it ever is, or is it like starting to waver a bit? Oh, it's absolutely fantastic awesome i still want to see them so bad i cannot i gotta go see him before he starts getting like any kind of warble in his voice as, as age just you know age, age does that i just don't want to i want to see him in his prime still i don't want to lose that chance oh he's very much in his prime still 100 percent. i shared more videos on my instagram and stuff like that uh because videos that were too long for twitter or discord yeah, plug plug you gotta go check those out what'd you say i said plug plug you gotta go check those out <laughs> plug my instagram <laughs> Meanwhile, Priam's just sitting there like, I don't know, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I'm afraid I really don't. So, <laughs> just pass away. I know nothing about Disturbed. I know nothing about the world of heavy metal or all that stuff. It's scary to me. Oh, not a fan? <laughs> no, I haven't heard of them, actually. But I saw that you had posted about it in the Discord. Wow. You know, there's... There was a song that went very viral recently with them. Like a few, well, not recently. Like it was a few years back. Uh, the sound of silence. They covered the sound of silence. Oh, yeah, okay. it's it, yeah. Like I don't know if you ever heard of the. It's just like it, it was all over. It's on all radios now. It's just like the one where he, the guy with the really deep voice singing the sound of silence. He's bald and he's got like two chin earrings or whatever they're called. Yeah, I forget what they're called. It yeah, it's good shit. Good shit. All of disturb is good shit. Oh yeah, love their stuff, man. Oh yeah, we're getting stuff. distracted. We're getting distracted. Yeah. I was like, we're I wanted disturbed. to show off. I wanted to show off my disturbed shirt because last night was the first time I ever saw them live. Despite me discovering them 16 years ago when their indestructible album came out. Oh, same, same. I, I, I other than Down with the Sickness, I'd never heard anything else. But then, boom, I, I found that album. Every song slaps. Every In, song. Inside the fire was their finale. So, oh, they, so they played that live? Yeah, they played Inside the Fire. They played Indestructible. Oh, now I'm fucking extra jealous. That whole album, man, that was my high school years. That was. Anyway, I'm sorry. I keep yeah. dragging us back in. <laughs> yeah. And again, I, I shared on my Instagram. Go check out my Instagram. Plug, plug, please. Do it. <laughs> All right, but anyway, we're here to watch I'm Wish. I'm the true musical <laughs> masterpiece, which is Wish. At least, at least, oh. at least the serves writes their music. <laughs> They're good songwriters. Inside the Fire was nominated for a Grammy, <laughs> unlike anything from Wish. Yep. It didn't win though. It lost to like you and me. You and me at six, I think. I I'm pretty sure it lost at the front door when the, when when the people who made Wish said, "What do you mean we're not supposed to come in?" No, 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 you're not on the list. You right. mean you don't think this is the thanks I get to deserve as a Grammy? <laughs> I mean. I think it does. I contributed something. to animation for a hundred years, and this is the thanks I get. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. Anyway, we're getting distracted. I paid the entry fee. I paid the entry fee to see this movie, and this is the thanks I get. I paid extra. This is the thanks I get. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, we we are getting distracted. I'm sorry.